In this screencast, I'm going to give an example of generating a simple um, submission file to submit a plasma sequence to GenBank. And I'll be using Genoma for this example. So uh, I have a, a Genoma project here, and the files I'll be using will be in the assembly directory. So I'll go to the assembly directory and show you these files. Uh, first of all, the sequence file, it contains all, uh, all of the contigs and sequences I've generated um, using sequencing and PCR. And you can see there's a lot of um, sequences here. And you can see by the line numbering, there's around uh, 126,000 uh, lines of uh, FASTA here. But I'm generating a, creating a very simple scaffold, and I'll show you the scaffold. I'm only using one sequence from my sequence file, and this is scaffold number eight. And I'm breaking it in half so that the last part of that scaffold is the first part of my um, output sequence. So you can see where I'm splitting it here. So it, um, I'm basically breaking the scaffold in half. I'm putting the part that comes after uh, this position in the scaffold at the start, and then the position that comes before here. So I want to generate the fast A sequence for that scaffold using Genoma View Fast A. And you can see here that's the fast A sequence. I'll just go to the top. You can see here. Um, it's not particularly useful yet because it, has, it doesn't have an identifier. So what I want to do is specify a, an identifier for this sequence. And when you submit a genome project to GenBank, you must first request an identifier for your genome. And so this is the identifier for my genome here. And I'm going to then, then going to pipe the output of this to a file, which I'm going to call plasmid FNA. And if I show you the top of that file now, you can see I spelled that wrong. This should have worked this time. Yeah. So here's the um, identifier for that sequence. And so after generating the FASTA sequence, I now want to generate the annotations. And the annotations I've stored in an uh, annotations.gff file. And you can see these are the annotations for scaffold 8. They have gene annotations, and you have a start and end position uh, for these annotations on that um, sequence. You have the strand here, the ID, and the name, note, and function where applicable. Now, if I want to submit a uh, sequence to GenBank, I need the annotations to be in the GenBank table format, and I can use the Genoma view table format to generate that. Let's just pipe that through less. You can see it better. And so here, the annotations now have been updated correspondingly for um, my updated sequence. So the, these annotations will now match the correct location on the corresponding FASTA file I've generated. And again, I want to add an ident the same identifier for that sequence. So I'll add the identifier there, and I'll pipe that through less again. And so now here, I have the corresponding identifier for that sequence. However, um, I still need to also add a prefix to these annotations. So when you submit a sequence to GenBank, they also require that you prefix your annotations. So I can do that now. And I can simply do that by specifying the prefix here. My prefix for this sequence is E1A. So if I run that command now, you can see uh, you have this here. Actually, I should 
add an underscore to there. See, E1A has been added to the ID of uh, these annotations. And this is not very particularly useful because these IDs here aren't very nice. Um, these IDs have come, been generated by the annotation program. So I can then update these by reset locus numbering. I'll put that through less again. And you can see the annotation IDs look much nicer now. They begin at 1. The first one is labeled 1. The second one is labeled 2. And so that's much better. But you can see that it's um, only the gene uh, have been generated, only the genes. So none of the product or note or function information has been included for the, um, for the encoded proteins. And so I can add that finally as well. And I'll do that here. And that command is generate encoded features. And again, you also need a unique prefix for these. So, and for that, I'm going to use GNL Barton Akron. And this should be a unique identifier. So, Barton is the name of the lab, and Akron is the name of the institution. And so, that should generate the uh, encoded features. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just editing my command line in Vim. So that's why I keep switching to Vim and then back out again to the command line. And so here you can see now I have the gene and the locus tag, but also I have this encoded CTS. So I have the protein ID, the note where applicable, the product. And you can see if you keep going down, you have product, note, and these are all the encoded uh, features as well. So I'm just going to write that to a file. And this should be the same name as the uh, nucleotide file, but in this case with the t TBL for table suffix. So fingers crossed that works. And yep, so this is it. So I can now, I have the two files. I have the uh, FASTA file and I have the table file of annotations. So now hopefully I can generate the uh, sequin file. And I'll be using table to ASN for that, which is a program you can download from GemBank. Uh, slash P is to specify, specify the working directory. And then the input file is going to be plasmid.fna. And now if I see here, I have the uh, sequin file here. So if I look at that file, this is the uh, sequin file. If I skip down, it's very large. You have the, uh, the encoded uh, nucleotide sequence. And then if, uh, if I go right to the bottom, you can see the uh, annotations here. But there's still one part missing because you also need to add the uh, um, some metadata to this. And in this case, it's uh, in a template file. So here we have the um, authors of the genome sequence the institution, for example, and the uh, publication details. <coughs> and you can generate this template file onto, um, from the um, GemBank website. And then this will give you this file that you can download. And so I need to include that with my sequence. And that is with the slash T and then submission template. And that should add that extra information here. So now if I then look at my plasmid sequin file, I now have this extra author information along with the um, uh, plasmid sequence. And if I skip to the bottom, I have, um, I have all the uh, encoded annotations as well, which looks good. And so that's basically it. Uh, it's a rather simple example because there's no um, the um, there's no gaps or anything in that sequence, but it gives you an idea of how Genomer can be used to cr uh, create the required files to submit. I'm just going to show you a m that I actually use a make file, and so what this means is I can specify um, all the commands I want to run. So here is the command to run the table file and I can just run genome review table, specify the identifier, locus numbering, uh, all everything I showed you earlier. Here's the FASTA file and then I have the identifier, the organism, 
and uh, extra metadata. I have a um, I can generate a mapping file which shows you the mapping of the original IDs onto the new IDs. The SQN file. If you specify um, the dash v um, b command, you can generate a GenBank file for your um, submission. And then here's the uh, error log for um, at table two SQN. So if I just run make now, that will execute that make file. I'll just clean up this directory first. That should run all my genomic commands to generate my required files. And you can see here is the files here. So here's the FSA file I generated earlier. Here's my sequin file. And here's my table file. And what this means is uh, instead of having to type the commands in over and over again, every time I update my scaffold, I can just run make and all the changed files are updated. And so that's that's it. And uh, I hope this gives an example of how you can use Genoma to um, uh, make genome finishing a lot simpler.